early 80s, scientists and many communities realized that HIV AIDS was not a medical condition affecting just certain people, namely men and adult men. Mothers and children were also affected. This was actually really a family disease because although children were not always infected by themselves, their parents were. On those days, almost 50% of children were not surviving after 10 years of age. The future of our planet was at stake. If someone like me had been born in the 80s, perhaps I'd not be alive. As someone born with HIV, science has made it possible for me to live as long as anybody else my age, maybe even longer. I can even now have children who were born free of HIV. Unfortunately, this was not the case for many mothers and babies born in the early 80s. In 1987, the FDA approved the first antiretroviral drug, Zydovudine. Although this drug was shown not to be very effective in preventing the progression of disease, this was really a breakthrough because the, for the first time, a specific treatment was available. Sadly, on those days, drugs were not available for children and pregnant women due to the lack of pediatric formulation and specific studies in pregnancy. There are important differences in the way HIV infects adults and children. I was told on many occasions that children are not just small adults. Fortunately, the number of children infected with HIV was much smaller, but this meant it would take longer to recruit enough children to complete the trials. More than 75% of people living with HIV were from lower middle income countries. And uh, in the uh, late 80s, it's become really an urgent global public health need to close the gap in HIV AIDS, providing intervention and effective treatment outside of Europe and North America. Seeing children with HIV uh, with nothing to offer them was the most challenging part of this pandemic for most of us. It was hard to cancel a family. You didn't know what to say to them when they asked you for how long their child would survive. You would see that look in their eyes, the expression on their faces. It told the whole story. A story of a devastated family, a story of a system that has failed them. And to make it worse, they even had lost the trust in the medical profession because it didn't have answers. In the 90s, while there is a turning point with the introduction of highly active antiretroviral therapy, there were still no pediatric formulation and not many studies specifically for children. This was really an issue. Involving children in uh, clinical trials uh, is a very complex process, and this is due to the uh, regulation and to ethics. And it is quite clear that uh, there is a need of an organization that is focused on uh, child health research and in particular in the development of pediatric medicine.
to address the need for a safer and equitable inclusion of women and children in clinical research, we established in 1991 PENTA. And uh, I really think that we can feel the impact around the world. In 1991, when PENTA started, it's been all about collaboration. PENTA really followed on from the European Collaborative Study led by Professor Catherine Peckham, which is looking at how many babies are born to mothers um, who have HIV infection. What we needed was a collaboration, a collaboration across multiple countries so that um, we could get results for children worldwide as fast as possible. The happiest day of my life was receiving my son's HIV negative test result. This was made possible by activists, researchers, and the medical community who worked to ensure that people living with HIV could have healthy babies. And that is why the work of groups like PENTA is very important. Groups who work in child health make sure that we can and we do prevents new transmission in children. Here in Asia, we were lucky to have joined the Penta family in 2006 through the PHPT Clinical Research Unit. At first, it was our participation in the PENTA-11 study, which assessed the planned treatment interruption in children living with HIV. Now, our children have access to the newest uh, antiretroviral drug available, often before they are available in the national program. Over this long-standing collaboration, we have seen our children affected by HIV grow up and start their own families. PENTA is dedicated in building a global network that conducts excellent research through building the capacity of young investigators in Africa like myself. PENTA is consistent in the engagement of its stakeholders as it drives the agenda of optimal pediatric ERT regimens. Through the opportunity that the PENTA training course gave us, we started a very interesting activities in Latin America. We have more than 10 clinical pediatric leaders in HIV infections and infectious diseases in general that are sharing day-to-day uh, -day experiences and uh, research. And this, we think that will contribute uh, to change the policies in the, in the region. Over the years, Penta has established a very effective uh, research platform. This comprises uh, most of the omics that are able to uh, tackle the immune response to infectious diseases and to unravel responses to new and old vaccines. <laughs> An example of this is antimicrobial resistance. Our partners were increasingly reporting to us that they were now seeing more and more babies and children presenting with uh, serious bacterial infections that were resistant to all of the antibiotics that were currently being used. So Penta developed a, a new structure and they're now taking forward a whole range of clinical trials and other research projects to try and improve clinical outcomes and improve global child health. PENTA's work includes the European Pregnancy and Paediatric Infections Cohort Collaboration, EPIC, where we combine data from many cohorts to address questions that no study can answer alone. Back in 2015, Zika virus was identified. Knowledge gained from HIV and other infections meant that PENTA was well placed to start researching Zika. Zika Action was born and we have been working in Europe and the Americas for the past five years to answer important questions on this re-emerged virus. Meanwhile, Penta is now hard at work researching COVID-19 in pregnancy and childhood.
at 30, Penta continues to build a global and multidisciplinary team of scientists and advocates to work for our planet's future, our children. The following will always define PENTA. Collaboration, multidisciplinary team and a passion for protecting the future of our children. The future of our children is the future of our planet. Together, we can paint a brighter future. Together we can paint a brighter future for child health research. We can paint a brighter future. Together we can paint a brighter future for child care research. Juntos podemos diseñar un mejor futuro para la investigación. Juntos podemos pintar un futuro mejor para la investigación en salud y salud. Together we can paint a brighter future for child health research. Vamos. Thank you.